a first light canal session for me. I've got the brolly up. It's light, persistent rain. And I'm off the mark with my target species. It's holding the dorsal up, the tone of cord there. The perch, great aren't they? And if they are your favorite species, then you'll understand, of course, why I get so excited about this fish. A typical session so far, in the sense that I arrived, put some bait out, waited 10 minutes or so, and then I started to get the plucks telling me that there were fish out there. One or two were quite lightning in that sense, lightning strikes that they tell you that there are roach out there. I'm happy to catch them, of course, but my target is perch, which is why I go for the, the four pound line, the size 16 up with a couple of maggots, because I'm one of those anglers that does tend to set the stall out, whereas others are happy to go and catch anything, which of course is the great joy of fishing, isn't it? But then, once the fish moved in, of course I've just caught that perch. I haven't been here too long. One of the things that I do though, and especially at this time of the year, with the fish not prolific at the moment in terms of feeding, I have a look inside the fish's throat. A robin almost landed on the rod tip there, just veered away at the uh, last moment and it's now on the far bank. I think he's coming back though for some, for some maggots. But one of the things I always do, this time of the year especially, is have a look inside the fish's throat to see how well it's feeding. And that perch had numerous maggots that it had taken before it went for the one with the hook in it, or the two with the hook in it. Double maggots on a size 16 hook, four pound line, there are some nice perch in the canal. I regularly catch one pound fish and two pound fish as well, and occasionally above. Also some nice chub. I've had fish to uh, well over six pounds, several fish as well, at different stretches. So if I catch one of those, or even a carp, I'd like to be able to have a chance of landing it. That's the beauty of fishing, isn't it? It can be to you what ever you want it to be. Anyway, I've got that one perch. It would be nice to add a few more and maybe bigger fish as well. Because that's ultimately, on a personal level, where I'm at. I would sooner catch one two pound perch as opposed to a hundred four ounce ones. Now other anglers would prefer the latter scenario. That was very interesting because I just pulled out of a, a very good perch. I had it on for a few moments, but unfortunately I had the dreaded hook pull that we all get from time to time. I know there's nothing wrong with my tackle. My hooks are sharp. You always have to check those sort of things, don't you? But at the moment, the fish aren't feeding confidently. They're not very bold, just slight plucks on the rod tip. I'm striking and then I'm uh, usually connecting with, with, a, with a fish. Obviously on that occasion, the connection didn't last very long, but nevertheless, still encouraging. I'm in a spot today when I'm fishing more of the boat channel. So the deeper water, although the air temperature is improving and we're in quite mild conditions at the moment, as we know, as anglers, the water and the air temperatures don't move at the same rate. It takes time for the water to catch up with what's going on above it. However, it's all good because the trend is on the increase and that's always a big factor when you take water temperature. It's not just the standalone temperature itself, but rather the trend. I'm ready to go shortly, just a short session this morning and the bites have dried up now. I'm finding that, that there's a feeding spell, first light and then, oh, and just as I speak, I get a little tap on the end of the rod there. 
but basically, generally speaking, they, they bites do dry up after a, a time. But I've been amongst the perch, which is what I set out to do. And, well, the one that got away, who knows what difference that could have made to the session. That little tap. Good morning. That little tap that I've just had didn't develop. Someone on the far bank saying good morning. As you heard there. Right, let's get this one in and then to continue with the rest of the day. Work-wise, I'm on reduced hours at the moment. I have been for a while, not much going on. Hopefully today we'll hear about what's happening with the league in Wales because the government made the announcement, the Welsh government on Friday, that they are continuing with lockdown so we'll find out well we have to find out sooner rather than later from the FAW the Football Association of Wales what's happening I do have a couple of games this week they're working games behind closed doors friendly friendlies one against a Welsh side and then the second against an English championship team so I'm looking forward to that one particularly because it's at their training ground I haven't been there before it'll be a a new tick on the ground hopping list. Not doing much ground hopping this season, obviously. But working in football means I do get to go to a, a number of games that I wouldn't ordinarily be able to attend. So I've added uh, Burnley to the list this year. Uh, we played Wolves at Lillishaw, so that was a new, a new pitch tick. Uh, Tranmere Rovers, Liverpool. Been to their training ground a few times, but this one was on a different pitch, so that was a, a new tick. So it's all, it's all good, it's all good. Right, I really am going to pull in now for the final time. And if you are fishing yourself this week, as always, tight lines and I'll see you soon.